If you're a real estate agent or a broker and you want to generate leads from Instagram or Facebook or any other social media platform organically without paying for ads, I have a question for you. When was the last time you audited your social profiles and made sure that they were 100% optimized? We're gonna talk about that in this video and how you could do it. My name is Amanda Fazalani, co-founder of Design for Agents, where we help real estate professionals close more deals by mastering your marketing, branding, advertising, and production strategies. Now, let's dive into auditing your social profiles, right? What does that mean? What does it entail? How do you do it? It's, it's actually very, very easy, and it's all about making sure that you have sort of these, these key things, all right? It's nine, nine things. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like a lot, but they're very, very simple. You can actually audit your profile with me right now while you're watching this video, right? Just pull out your phone. If you're watching this on your phone, I'm pretty sure YouTube will like minimize and you could watch it like that. Just listen along and let's go through this audit, right? Start off with one social channel. Instagram is pretty easy. Facebook is pretty easy. Um, the rest of them, Twitter, uh, what else? TikTok, those same rules pretty much apply. Um, so let's dive in, right? So number one is, is there a photo of you? <laughs> so go into your profile, take a look at your profile. Like if you're a stranger and seeing it for the first time, is there a photo of you? Now this might seem very, very simple, but the idea here is that we do not want a photo of your brokerage. I cannot tell you the number of Remax agents, no offense. Comp I've seen Compass agents do it, EXP agents, all types of, every brokerage on this, Weikart, Worker, however you say it, I can't say it. They use the brokerage logo, and that is something you want to avoid at all costs. I would even go so far to say that you should not do it where it's your face and the brokerage logo. That's just, nah. I'll make another video about why. Um, you know, we're gonna have a branding 101 video if we don't already have it. I'll link it below or up here if it exists already. But make sure that there's a photo of you. Real estate is a people to people business. People need to see your face. They need to know who they are. If you're going to be DMing people or people are going to be DMing you, they want to know who the heck it is that they're talking to. So make sure that there is a photo of you. If there isn't one, get one. Number two is that you want to make sure that your name is on there. I cannot tell you how many agents there's no name. It just says like the brokerage and that I can help you buy or sell, buy, sell, invest even <laughs> like ask me about real estate. What's your name? Who are you, right? Uh, I, actually, in most states, you are required by law to have your first and last name and like license stuff on your social profile, but that's a conversation for another day. <laughs> We're not talking about that here. Just even your first name will suffice, right? The third thing is, what do you do, right? Are you someone who specializes in helping people with foreclosures and short sales? Are you like very real estate investor centric? Are you an expert with first time home buyers, right? Are you the co-op queen of Manhattan, right? Are, are you luxury only, right? You want to specify this because I know, I know, I know. You might be sitting there thinking, I work with anyone. I have take any listing. I have like, give me all the buyers. I don't care. Luxury, not luxury, the smallest deal. Just give it to me. Sometimes we are at that point in our career, other times not so much, right? So if you are someone who has really figured out what your specialty is, put that in your profile. If you are someone who hasn't or maybe, you know, you're kind of more broad, put what your value proposition is, right? What, what do you do differently? What makes you stand out? What sets you apart from all the other agents? not just in your city, but even in your brokerage, right? Be specific, keep it short, but be specific, right? The next thing that we're gonna wanna audit is whether, like, where are you? <laughs> where are you? What's your market area, right? There are so many agents who literally, they will post actual like listing photos of a property and they don't say what city or state or anything that it's in. Their profile doesn't say what city or state or anything like where they are. So if someone actually like enjoyed a video of yours, but then they went to your profile and they have no idea where you work, how can they know whether or not they can, like you can help them? How will they know that? 
right? If you're reaching out to people through DMs or comments or anything like that, how are they gonna know that you're someone that they can ask questions to, right? And it will happen where like, you know, I, I've licensed in New York and I've had people from like Cali or Florida ask me real estate questions who are, or buyers and sellers like, oh, I wanna list my property. Obviously I can't list a Florida property if I'm not licensed there, but I can refer them, right? But that's gonna happen, you know, far and few between what you want to be happening ideally is people recognizing, oh, you're in my market area that I want to buy in. I know that you can help me. You're an expert in this area. So you want to make sure that you actually are like mentioning like I'm in this, at least the state, you know, where are you? <laughs> so the next thing is how can they reach out to you? So each platform has different versions of this, right? For Instagram in particular, there's a contact button. If you're not going to use the contact button where when you click it, it pops up at the bottom and it has your uh, uh, your email and your phone number if you set it up that way. If you're not going to use that, have something else, right? Tell them what's the best way to reach you, whether it's your phone number or email or send me a DM, right? Make sure that you say it somewhere in your profile, even if it's in a highlights section, like just let let them know right next is are you providing value right are you providing value so obviously this is harder to do inside of your your profile bio right i'm talking about your actual account in general if you're doing the audit live with me right now when you scroll are your posts actually value driven like if a buyer or seller came to your profile, are they going to get anything out of it? Is there a reason for them to follow you, right? This is important for you to, to look at because it might make you change your whole social media content marketing strategy because you might be looking at it and saying like, oh, I'm, I'm only posting property photos. Or you might look at it and say like, oh, I'm only I'm only sharing those keeping it current matters posts. <laughs> right? Like you, you should be doing more than that. Right. And if you're not, you might want to get on that. And if you are interested in getting on that and making your social strategy way better than it currently is, go to the link in the description and get 365 social, our real estate social media action plan. Go check it out there. All the details are in there. I won't talk about it here. I'm just going to drop that right there. All right. The next thing that we want to look at within your audit is, is it easy for someone to reach out to you, right? So this goes back to like, do they know how to contact you? Is it easy for someone to reach out to you? If the only option is for them to DM you and you're not good with responding to DMs quickly, you might want to change that. You might want to go back and make sure, okay, that contact button is there. They can call me straight from Instagram, right? Instagram even allows you to set up like WhatsApp <laughs> messaging and stuff like that. Like there's so many options for contacting. Make sure that they know what's the easiest easiest way to do it. The next thing is, are you showing up consistently, right? So are you providing value? Are you showing up consistently? If you're not showing up consistently, then, you know, the algorithm is not your friend, blah, 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 blah. We're not going to touch on that in this video, but it's just a question to ask yourself for this audit. If you're not showing up consistently, then got to fix that, right? The next thing is, is there a link in the bio for you to go to? or for them to go to actually. <laughs> is there something that they can go sign up for? An email list uh, to check out the newest properties for sale on your website that's IDX and mobile friendly, right? What's, what's the situation with the link in your bio? I pray for you that it is not your Zillow profile or your Zillow reviews or your broker's homepage or your homepage of your website, which is not set up for you to convert leads at all ever. Don't use that video for another day, right? Make sure that you're looking into that. And then the final thing is, are you sharing your personality? right? Don't shy away from showing who you are, right? Like, are you a coffee or tea or Red Bull or bank person, right? Like, <laughs> how can we make you relatable to your audience? Or do you have cats or dogs, right? Are you an apartment dweller, a, a condo dweller, a house dweller, or like a big old piece of plot of land with animals dweller, right? Like, people are interested in these things. The mundane details of our lives and the small 
little nuances that make us who we are like are you a, a comedic personality more serious are you a bookworm right you might think that these things don't matter when it comes to your real estate business and you should really separate business from personal but the truth is like when you're hanging out with buyers and sellers and going to showings and doing listings and stuff like that like little by little you get to know each other and if you kind of break that glass through social media and they feel like they know you already not just as a professional but on a human level it makes having those conversion conversations so much easier because you're doing a lot of the relationship building virtually digitally right without even having a conversation with them we've literally had listing appointments that we've gone on where the sellers know like <laughs> when and where we got married they've seen our kid they like know they know things about us because we share it they know that we're obsessed i'm obsessed with coffee and whipped cream on my coffee right like and that's a talking point during the appointment they offer us coffee because <laughs> they're like i know you love coffee and i got whipped cream right like that has happened and it can happen for you too so those are the nine points that you need to cover in your social audit. So just want to drop in that for 365 social, which is in the link in the description, we actually have a Google Sheets tool that's included in there that has seven different social channels. And it is an auditing tool where you go through the checklist and it will tell you whether or not your profile is 100% optimized, 70% optimized, 50% optimized, 30% 0%, right? If you have none of the things. So you can actually go there and work through the checklist. And it also has over 365, 400 to be exact, 400 social prompts so this means you are never going to run out of ideas for your next piece of content right and you'll see more or less when you go to the page there so go check that out and if you haven't already subscribe to this channel because we put out content every week and i don't want you to miss a beat so as always i'm wishing you tons of happy new clients accepted offers and a whole lot of closings